I am so sorry. I am sitting here running my mouth and I had my mic muted. Forgive me, y'all. We're going to uh, chalk that up to a technological error because, you know, it wasn't me, right? But anywho, welcome, welcome to Marriage Beyond the Breach. Um, as I was saying, even though you couldn't hear me, I was saying welcome to Jackie, welcome to Miss Ollie. Um, anyone who's viewing now, I, I thank you for uh, for tuning in, for taking the time. I appreciate everyone who watches these videos, whether live or at a later time. Okay. So I was saying that I mentioned in so many previous episodes. You still can't hear me? You can hear me now. Yeah, you can hear me now. Hey, Sean. Um, I've all, I've talked about counseling, couples counseling, and I'm a strong proponent of couples receiving counseling, whether they're receiving premarital counseling, they have counseling after marriage. And uh, one of my professors at Cairn University, Dr. Black, he even suggested couples have pre-engagement counseling. Because once you go through that process, the individuals may decide to either not give the ring or not accept the ring if a proposal is made. But in any event, we're going to be talking about that this evening. We're going to be talking about couples counseling in general, covering various areas. But there's two particular uh, treatment modalities that I want to focus on. One is emotionally focused therapy. And the other is prepare, enrich. And both of them are evidence-based and they are very, very effective when it comes to counseling. So I have a powerhouse line up for y'all this evening. Y'all gonna thank me when it's all over. Okay, so just get ready. I have the person that I refer to as one of my favorite, favorite people on the planet. And she said, I think she was here last week. And she said, you know what? I'm getting to be a regular. And yeah, okay. That I kind of kind of just kind of slid that in there a little bit, but she's starting to notice that she's on here a lot. <laughs> and that's because I love her so much. I love her presence. I love when she's here. And I know the feedback that I've gotten from some of you that you feel the same way uh, as I. So I'm going to bring on none other than Dr. Danita Thompson. Hey, Dr. Danita. Hey, Valerie. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again for having me. Um, marriage counts. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. So this topic is absolutely near and dear to my heart. Um, uh, I am the owner and clinical director of Mending Hearts Behavioral Health and Family Services. And I guess you all could say, because you could introduce me because I've been on several times. I feel like a broken record, but <laughs> we at Mending Hearts are a group of passionate people helpers. And at Mending Hearts, um, we service individuals. Um, we counsel couples, families, children. We offer um, higher level services, medication management, um, psychiatric evaluations, and intensive outpatient treatment. Um, <clears throat> we're growing. We um, we just absolutely love what we do as a family. Um, everyone at Mending Hearts, uh, we're all believers. So we're all clinically trained, but also all believers. So everyone in the practice can offer Christian counseling. So I'm excited. Um, I'm excited about tonight. Um, I didn't mention last week about um, my journal that I wrote, the Set Your Body Free. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. set your body free, mind, body, and spirit. Uh, it's a journal to freedom, um, and you can get it on my web website, drdanitathompson.com. Um, and now I'm a contributing. I don't know if you saw that uh, post on social media, Valerie. That I'm. A I did. I shared it. Yeah, I'm a contributing author to. Um, it's a group of twenty, uh, twenty-two uh, uh, authors, and we all wrote a chapter in "Girl Be Selfish," um, learning to embrace your rhythm of self-care. So, um, I'm excited about that, and 
That's me. I'm married almost 42 years. And we have three adult children. So I think don't, I, don't forget them grandbabies. Don't forget them grandbabies. Two grandchildren, yes, Logan and London. So I have a little bit that I could say about marriage. Just a little. Yeah. A little something, something, right? Mm -hmm. And I just want to, um, I just want to say that I not only do I have my own copy of Dr. Danita's book, I have shared it with friends. I've also sent it to some of my clients uh, for whom I thought it could be a benefit. Mm -hmm. And I strongly encourage you uh, to get, hold it up again, Dr. Danita. Yes, set your body free. <laughs> so you can get that. Here is Dr. Danita, Dr. Danita Thompson.com is her website where you can find that. And it's all it is also available on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon, Amazon, yes, Amazon, it is. Amazon mm -hmm. as well. So for my next guest, who is also she's um, she's catching up with you, Dr. Danita. She's about to be a regular <laughs> too. <laughs> I'm going to bring on none other than, and forgive me, I have to say, I will always and forever see her as one of my professors. She was one of my professors at Cairn University, and we are colleagues now. We yes. And I do try, but I admit that it is difficult. So, hello, Kim. Hello, Valerie. You did it. <laughs> So, can you tell the uh, the listeners a little something about yourself? Yeah, my name's Kim Jetter. I am the owner and clinical director of Jetter and Associates, and that's located in Bucks County, um, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. Um, uh, hearing some feedback from somewhere. Oh, okay. What is it? I, it sounds kind of scratchy, like it sounds scratchy. Okay, let me, um, you know what? Let me pause. I, I don't well, think it's you. I'm, I don't know. I, we'll see if it's Tracy. I'm going to mute Tracy for, well, she's already muted because she's in the back, but I, oh, I'll, mute, yes. I'll mute her just in case it's her. But, okay. but go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Professor Jim. That's okay. Um, if you still hear it, let me know. We can swap places and I'll check something and come back. Um, so we have a small practice of probably about five clinicians all together, including myself. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting ready to take on an intern this spring. Are you still hearing the feedback? Mm -hmm. um, it sounds Actually. like something scratching on the mic almost. I mean, I have, I wonder if it's my sound machine that you're hearing. Does it? No, I don't know. It, just sounds it, it sounds like scratching on the mic. Like, is the mic on your lapel or? or? No, it's on my computer. Do you still hear it? I just heard it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I don't hear it right now, though. You don't hear it right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me check Go something. Ahead. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, we do a lot of work utilizing emotionally focused therapy, and all of our clinicians have been have received basic level training in mm -hmm. EFT. Mm -hmm. um, that's something. There, it just happened again. I just heard a scratching again. I don't know what that is. I that's going. Do you, you know what? Should we swap and I'll come back? I just want to check. You want to check something? Yes. And then come back? Yep. Okay. Listen, okay. just make sure you come back now. Don't leave us just hanging. <laughs> <laughs> we won't do that. I promise we won't do that. Okay. I'm going okay. to put you in the waiting area while you do that. Okay. okay. I'll be. Okay. So we have somebody who's on for the very first time, and I want you all who are listening to give her a fantabulous marriage beyond the breach welcome. I want you to welcome her. I want you to give her a shout out and all that, because y'all know when I have people on here and I like them and y'all like them, I do everything I can to try to bring them back. So I am going to bring on to the stage none other than Miss Tracy Varghese. Hey, Tracy. Hello, hello. I love that intro. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much for being here. So will you uh, share what you would like uh, with the viewers? 
Yes, I'm glad you met uh, Kim for a brief moment while she gets it all, the speaker all, you know, situated. I work at um, Jetter and Associates with Kim. Um, I work with couples and individuals, but particularly couples are my passion. I love working with them. Um, I am fully EFT trained and also mm. help um, part of the, uh, the Philadelphia chapter of um, EFT, which helps, um, you know, train actually other therapists in EFT. So mm -hmm. I, I really do this thing. So from, uh, from day one, I've, you know, I've kind of drifted <laughs> EFT and I, and I really do believe in it. And I really do love it, especially for my couples. Um, on my side, I, I am married for 21 years, um, this June, 20 years this June. I have three teenagers, two boys and a girl. My oldest is going off mm. to college in a few months, which, I'm still wow. mourning right now. So, yeah, so that's me. Wow. Yes. Well, I am so, I am thrilled to have you on here this evening. And um, as Tracy said, she's at Jetter and Associates along with, um, with Kim Jetter. And I remember when, uh, they, when um, Dr. Jones, not this year, but last year, was it last year, Dr. Danita, or the year before that we went to that workshop? Um, last year. <clears throat> okay. And Tracy, you were there and I sat in your segment oh, awesome. that you, you did on a couple's counseling. Oh, nice. And I was, I was very, very impressed. It was you and someone else who were yes, there yeah. who uh, were uh, presenters. So we did it. Yeah. We did a, sh uh, an, a presentation on Created for Connections, which is yes. um, an awesome couples yeah. counseling for like on uh, for couples counseling so. yeah that was very good i was uh, i was quite impressed with that so thank you thank you for being here let me just thank you. Quickly thank you for having me. banner for a moment so um and thank you guys for shouting out miss tracy because you know like i said y'all treat her good now because we don't want her to come back okay yeah. And let me just say, I just want to speak to something that Dr. Danita said when she said, and I loved what you said it, Dr. Danita, um, and you said that we are all believers there at Mending Hearts, and we are uh, clinically trained. And I don't think you could have a better balance than being clinically, tr clinically trained and theologically sound. Yeah. I think that is a marriage made in heaven. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes. Uh, I just want to just want to speak to that. And yes, we are believers, but we also see uh, clients who are non-believers. A lot of us have clients who are non-believers. Um, so I just wanted to to share that and get that piece in. So I want to start with um, I want to ask this question. So what are is some my, of the most is is Kim ready to come back in? Is she? Oh, there she is. I see her now. She's there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I was looking down at my paper. I didn't see her come back in. Hey, Professor Jetter, welcome back. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank Sorry you. for the so technical I'm gonna, error. I'm gonna, what was it? Technical error, but we're back. Oh, well, listen, y'all saw I had one of them at the beginning. So, yeah, yeah, technology does its own thing. But see, yours was really technical. Mine, I just didn't know what I was doing at the moment. But anywho. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask this. What are some of the most common issues that lead couples to seek therapy? And what might that initial session look like? Because I'm sure some people, especially couples, are thinking about it. Oh, if I go, what's going to happen? What 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 might that process uh, look like? So from your perspective, what are some of the most common problems or reasons or issues that bring couples in? And anyone can address this. Um, Kim, I, I guess I could take it. <laughs> I know we kind of talked about um, mm -hmm. one of the things I think um, I, I guess this is this is something I believe. Um, one of the first things that scripture uses after talking about uh, marriage is leave, cleave and weave. So mm. I could almost connect any issues a couple comes in. Mm -hmm. back, back to that verse. Like God really wow. knew what he was doing with that one, one verse, right? You could almost put, put it back to that verse and it's, it's pretty amazing. So, you know, from, you know, communication to sex, to infidelity, to finance, parenting, 
literally anything you could think of back to that person where you are bringing so much into your marriage and trying to figure out how to create a new family and mm -hmm. live together. So, um, that, okay, um, I'm, I'm hearing it again. I don't know what that is. Is anybody wearing? Nobody's wearing a mic. No. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So some of the things I always say, like we, you know, start in, in a marriage, we sweep things under the rug you know, often. And, you know, what is a small issue, eventually it's like, oh, we, you know, we let it go. We let it go until it becomes a mountain that cannot be hidden anymore. So um, that's where a lot of, you know, these things come about. So I, I think one of, you know, there's usually couples come in when, you know, everything's hitting the fan. There's issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but there are wonderful couples that come in where like, hey, I kind of feel something and I need to just, you know, make sure that we're okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Taking care of the dust before it turns into a mountain. So I, yeah. I, I do believe that um, couples counseling can be a blessing. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead, Dr. Dita. I, I think that um, people don't necessarily know that they're coming because of this, but selfishness mm -hmm. and individualism is huge, a huge issue in marriage. And when they step in the room and say, he doesn't make me happy, she doesn't make me, he doesn't do this and she doesn't do that. And there's no we, it's all about me and I and what mm. someone is doing for me. And we just live in, America is very individualistic. So mm -hmm. very, you know, so we don't typically think about others Um as believers, um, of course, we're not supposed to be uh, conformed to this world's way of thinking, the American way of thinking. But mm -hmm. we we get very easily sucked into um, into ourselves and in, into selfishness. Yeah, that's good. That's mm -hmm. good. Um, someone wrote on here. I wonder why men don't like counseling. That is kind of a loaded question. Um, <laughs> I know how I may tend to respond to that, but how would you all respond to that question? Yeah, I think one of the reasons men are a little bit more apprehensive, I think men tend to have more of a uh, the mindset of a, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot longer for them to actually get that we need to do something. And often it takes the wife saying, unless we go to counseling, you know, some kind of ultimatum that right. leads them right. to go. And I think there's also kind of a fearful avoidant piece mm -hmm. of, am mm -hmm. I going to be the one that is held mm -hmm. to play? And is my yes. wife and the therapist going to you know, ambush me or gang up on me. Mm -hmm. And then I mm -hmm. become the bad guy and I lose again. And I already feel like I'm losing in the relationship. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, and without overgeneralizing, over many men are not socialized to um, consider their emotions mm. um, and not all not very emotionally mature mm -hmm. um, and so the thought of going in to start to talk to somebody about how i feel makes them feel weak um mm. as society you know would say that men are not men if they're gonna cry and you know things like that so yeah yeah i think and to I add on to that real quick um shame along with that mm -hmm. Because I couldn't do something, I couldn't fix it, I couldn't make our marriage better, then now I have to rely on someone else. You know, it's like the whole fix it mentality or or I just failed at this mm. and, and yeah. you know, that our marriage is, or I couldn't do anything about it. So along yeah. with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good, Tracy, because uh, a lot of men, not all, because like Dr. Rita said, we don't want to overgeneralize, but a lot of men do have... Uh, that perspective, if, if especially if they see themselves as a strong leader, and uh, you know, 
priest of their home, so to speak, and they have this issue within their marriage that they feel, oh man, I, I can't fix it. Yeah, now I got, like you said, got to go to somebody else that mm-hmm. might diminish them in their own eyes, not necessarily in their wife's eyes. Right. So yeah, that is um, that is a great, great point. My uh, daughter-in-law. Liz is just asking, do you all agree everyone should have a year of counseling regardless of the marital status? That's a great question. I don't I don't know about how I would answer that one, but does anyone want to tackle that? I, I think it could be a wonderful practice, like a preemptive and preventative practice to, to mm-hmm. strengthen and kind mm-hmm. of establish a firm foundation for the relationship. To like, It yeah. does not it can only help to understand one another's attachment needs kind of going mm-hmm. in at the outset. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Understanding how your families of origin influence mm-hmm. mm, what shows up and what triggers a negative interaction cycle in the relationship. I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of benefits to putting that into practice. Yeah. yeah. When you talk about merging two lives, <laughs> it's a lot. And um, and most people <clears throat> are not, none of us are 100% healthy and have, you know, um, have it all together. And so we all could, you know, use the assistance of someone, a third party, helping us to navigate some of those uh, tougher spaces in meshing the two lives, for sure. Yeah. And I think also sometimes when a couple may think, especially if it's one uh, member of the relationship that thinks, oh, everything is hunky-dory, it's smooth, everything is great. And sometimes the other partner could be dying on the inside, but they're just not Mm -hmm. saying anything. Mm -hmm. Just because the partner is not speaking out or giving voice to any maybe discomfort or um, discontent or any happiness or um, a lack of needs being met and they're just kind of pushing it down and pushing it down and pushing it down and the other partners say, hey, everything is cool here. We don't have any problem. What we need to go mm-hmm. to marriage counseling for? So mm-hmm. yeah, I think that there could be um, some of that, some of that as well. It's so. important to um, periodically check on the state of the union. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, have periodic check-ins. How, how, mm-hmm. and, but the thing with that, though, Dr. Danita, it requires a level of um, insight, mm-hmm. a level of self-reflection, and yeah. absolute honesty and openness and transparency in an atmosphere of safety. Because if you don't feel safe, <clears throat> you may not speak um, to some of the issues that you are personally feeling. Mm-hmm. But that's a great idea, and I absolutely encourage that, to have periodic check-ins uh, you know, state of the marriage um, sort of meeting. I think mm-hmm. Professor Jenner is having some more um, technical issues, but I'm sure she'll come back on when um, when all of that clears up. So I want to talk about emotionally focused therapy, and um, as we know, it's one of the, uh, one of the therapeutic ap- approaches that are used in couples counseling. So can you explain how EFT works? and why it might be beneficial for couples who are struggling with connection and or communication. Um, I wish Kim was here, but um, how many hours (laughs) do we have here to explain all this? It's a lot, it's a lot, but um, one of the reasons to kind of take all everything that you could learn in like multiple classes and stuff in, it's the reason why EFT, I love EFT, um, it's an evidence-based approach, it, Mm -hmm. you know, looks into attachment theory and um but to keep it simple the reason why i love eft and why i think it works is it doesn't look to put a bandage on it you know Mm -hmm. if 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 a wife is complaining about you know the husband works too much uh, and you know this and you're not trying to put a schedule together there's something else underneath it you know it's Mm -hmm. the root what are you, you're taking a shovel and digging into the root of it. You're not staying on the data part of it. Um, You're almost, you know, you're trying to figure out what is actually making that person upset or sad. It's not Mm. the job. It's the fact that I don't feel connected to you anymore. I don't feel like 
I am important enough for you to give me space. You could work, you know, at that point, you work all day long, as long as you showed that, show your wife that like, you are important to me. Oh my God, I had no right. idea that that's what you're feeling when you're complaining about mm. didn't come home an hour earlier, you know what I mean? Or the dishes mm -hmm. weren't, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's, it goes into, if you kind of imagine a tree and, and rotten fruits, you're not looking to take the rotten fruits off. You're looking to take a shovel and dig into the root mm -hmm. that's yeah. you know? And yeah. to heal the fruits so, you can actually figure out what to do on the surface, on those mm -hmm. that we sweep under the rug. Uh, yeah, that's good because, you know, that saying is whatever the couple is arguing about is not really what they're arguing about. Right, right. It's something okay. underneath all of that stuff. And as you're saying, um, e that's where EFT is looking to um, <clears throat> focus on and getting the and rooting out all that stuff because if you can get to the root of that and fix that root then mm -hmm. uh, the fruit on the trees won't be dead anymore you'll have some living right. fruit yeah, yeah. not like even that. dead anymore it won't grow anymore you know what i mean right. you yeah already healed the root so you don't have to worry about you know limbs that are going to die later but right. you healed it healed it mm -hmm. ground mm -hmm. up that's good. Now you mentioned uh, briefly attachment. So what part does attachment theory play in? Hey, welcome back, Professor Jetter. Beautiful I'm, you, thing you, is that Tracy I is know. is a wonderful <laughs> EFT therapist. So. <laughs> You're like, Where's Kim? <laughs> So welcome back. And I uh, just want to say someone said hello to you. That is Caleb. Hey, Caleb. Hey, thank you Caleb. for watching. And everyone who is watching now, I appreciate you. And if you are on um, YouTube, I would appreciate if you would. What's the thing you're doing? Because they different things on different platforms. Mm -hmm. What do you subscribe. do? On subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all can tell I'm not all techie, right? So <laughs> subscribe and hit the notification bell. And that way you'll be notified every time we have an upcoming uh, program here on Marriage Beyond the Breach. We are on typically every uh, Sundays unless we're taking a break for some reason. So, um, Professor Jetter, I don't know if you heard all of what uh, Tracy said and if, or if there was anything that you wanted to uh, add to it. She was answering about EFT, um, why it might be beneficial for couples who are struggling with communication and uh, connection. So if you have yeah. anything that you would like to add before we move to the next question, that would be great. Yeah, I think one of the real benefits too of EFT is that it's an experiential model. Mm -hmm. And so many approaches focus on behavior modification, right? Mm -hmm. so how, mm -hmm. how can we get the couple to just grow their communication skills. And that's an important like outcome of the experiential change and the change yeah. process. But really we need to get to the root and like what is happening and what is present in their identity that mm. influences what comes out in their um, interaction and what contributes and triggers a negative interaction cycle mm. between them. And so really looking at, okay, the identity and what flows out of it versus, okay, just take these three steps, this follow this formula and mm -hmm. you will experience change versus mm -hmm. moving to a place of having felt safety mm -hmm. and emotional security. And that's yeah. the key is working towards emotional security and strengthening that bond. Like mm -hmm. you want each partner to be able to say, wow, this person has my back, no matter what. Mm -hmm. They are yeah. in my corner and I can count on them. You know, wow. I think and, that- and that's, that's important. That is so important um, in a relationship, uh, in a marriage, to feel that level of safety, that level of comfort, that level where you really feel that you can count, not just feel that, you know that you no. can count on your partner because they've been there for you and they've proven it by their behaviors and not just what's coming out of their mouth because anything might come out of there. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, so when yeah. Um, Tracy was responding, she mentioned attachment. So I'm wondering what part does attachment theory play in EFT and why is it important for couples to even know about attachment theory and or their attachment styles? 
Yeah. And Tracy and I will both respond and chime in. And mm -hmm. it, it's interesting. It's okay. How does this ha happen? And how does God bring two people together where one's attachment need is very, like primary attachment need is very different from their spouses. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. often the things that one might be doing to, to experience safety triggers um, the negative cycle in the other partner. Yeah. And, and so understanding the family of origin and if you, so say a person has a core issue with abandonment, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And the other partner has a core um, a need in the area of not feeling good enough. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're set, they're set up for a negative cycle mm -hmm. because yeah. Yeah. the one who feels good enough says, well, I'm not the person that can show up for my wife well because I'm not good enough. And that reinforces the person who feels often feels abandoned. Mm. There's something with me where that person, I'm, I'm being abandoned yet again. And so yeah. you're kind of stuck. And instead of kind of understanding, oh, this has a lot to do with things that I experienced growing up and it's showing up and playing out in my relationship with my spouse. Mm -hmm. There's often this, negative view of self and a negative pro projection onto the partner. So a lot of the work is around how do you help them move from a negative view of self and other and not yeah. the worst. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. What you just described, those mm -hmm. two uh, individuals would be triggering each other on a very regular basis mm -hmm. and not feeling connected to their partner at all. Yep. Wow. Yes. And then Tracy, the other one. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Tracy. No, no, no go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Professor Jenner. Okay. And then I'll, I'll ask Tracy. So, so the one thing that you'll see we talk about in EFT is the pursuer withdrawer relationship, right? Mm. So the one who is fearful that they're not good enough, they may withdraw from the relationship. Yeah. Whereas the mm. pursuer has more of an anxious attachment and they want to resolve it in the moment. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. their their way of fighting for the relationship is to pursue the other mm -hmm. partner. Whereas the withdrawer, their way of fighting for the relationship and fighting for safety is, well, I don't want to add fuel to the fire. So I'm just not going to say anything. Yes. So it becomes you know, I remember when um we were when I, I was in school at Cairn and during the time when we were learning about EFT, um, one of the presenters who came in talked about the couple's dance and that mm -hmm. every couple has mm -hmm. a dance. That's a dance. It may uh, uh, be a different dance for different couples, but the goal is to get a couple who is out of sync and not in sync dancing with one another to, to have a, to be in sync, so to speak, mm -hmm. but they do that dance. And I remember very uh, distinctly talking about, and I've been talking about some of my couples about the pursuer withdrawer. And if you sit in front of a couple long enough, it is so clear to see which mm -hmm. one is a pursuer and mm -hmm. which one is a withdrawer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another way to kind of see that is like what's your cycle like what's the if you know kind of see if, what's the fight mm. that you constantly have what are you going to how how is this and then to kind of understand your cycle is it's healing all on its own you know you think mm -hmm. now you know what's going on now you know that yet i'm we're arguing about this yet again right yeah. what, is, what is that cycle what is that dance that you're doing so you can actually before you kind of pull it apart you got to know what what are you pulling apart, right? So, right, that yeah. is what EFT does too. It it helps you kind of like, hey, this is what's happening. This is what you're doing. So now let's figure out a different dance or a different cycle. Now let's go backwards. You know what I mean? Do a different yeah. way of um, seeing this. Yeah. That, go ahead, Doctor Janita. Well, I was just gonna say you all use the term. I, I don't. Um, I haven't been trained in EFT, but you use the term um, pursuer and um, pursuer and withdraw. Withdraw. Mm -hmm. withdraw. I I say to my clients that um, we have the steamroller and the turtle who puts yeah. his head in the shell. <laughs> That's a good. One. That's good. I think I might start using I that. Like yeah, that. I like that. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. I'm writing it down because, uh, yeah, I got some couples. Yeah. One is a steamroller, one is the turtle. That I like mm -hmm. that terminology. Um, and I just want to invite those of you who are watching live, if you have comments and if you have questions for our panel, uh, don't hesitate to put the questions in the chat because we got some powerhouses on here tonight. And if y'all want to prick their back, pick their brain, now is the time to do it. Because once you say goodnight, then of course you can seek to get uh, counseling at um, either Mending Hearts, Behavioral Health and Family Services or Jetter and Associates because we are available and we want to do whatever we can to help not just individuals, but couples as well. I know that mm -hmm. couples is on my heart. That, that's my thing. I love couples yeah. counseling and so many of my colleagues they would rather poke their eyeballs out with a sharp <laughs> pencil than to do couples counseling um but i i love it i absolutely love it um so yeah miss ollie said always seem to be argument over money issues okay mm. i don't know if you are saying that as a comment in terms of your own relationship or if you have a question regarding arguments over finances so we, we were talking about EFT and uh, there is another approach that I want to discuss and that is prepare enrich therapy and that focuses on both premarital and marital counseling. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering, Dr. Danita, if you can discuss how this particular therapy prepares couples for long term success and what are the key components of the program? Um, yeah, so I am I am a prepare and rich facilitator. I was trained many years ago, probably in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, that um, now that the business has become so busy, I don't see as many clients as I used to. So I don't get as many opportunities to um, use Prepare and Rich, mm -hmm. but I love it. Um, I am a huge proponent of preparing people for marriage. Um, mm -hmm. I got zero preparation. Um, and I, I just really believe that if people get a good head start, um, laying some really good foundation that they have the opportunity to start well and maintain. Um, so when prepare and enrich is also evidence-based, um, and it begins with an in-depth assessment. I really, really love the instrument that's used. Um, mm -hmm. to assess uh, the uh, couple's uh, awareness of their relationship strengths and areas that they could um, work on for growth. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when, when you give this couple who is coming in for premarital counseling um, or marital or to enrich the marriage, um, the assessment is given and then they give a report and it's a 25 page report mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and it goes through um, the way the couple communicates, uh, conflict resolution, what their partner style and, and habits are, the financial management um, habits, um, leisure activities, mm -hmm. How they um, their their level of affection it talks about sexuality, friends and family, relationship mm -hmm. roles, and spiritual beliefs. So, it really covers the gamut of everything that a couple would need to address um, and and talk about with each other. So, it's the the um, assessment serves as a really good springboard, I think, for having couples um, talk about those deeper, you know, conversations, things that they probably wouldn't even think to talk about um, mm. in preparing for marriage. Um, I'm sure, yeah, the, 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 because it's so in depth um, and I like that they rate, you know, they, they, it, they compare the, the answers for the partners and tell provide a graph that helps them right. to see where they score in relation mm -hmm. to each other. And mm -hmm. so um, it will say, you know, you, you're really strong in this area. This is an area that you um, could potentially um, have some more dialogue so that you can grow in mm -hmm. 
connections in in this specific area. So mm -hmm. I I I don't use it um, in by itself. I I like to bring in you know other mm -hmm. other um, uh, treatment modalities and you know kind of to have an eclectic approach to it because I yeah. don't. I think that, um, you know, the going back to go forward is very important. Family of origin um, um, discussions. I do talk about the dance as well, or that I call it the themes of um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that coming up um, for, you know, for the couples or even for those that are, are preparing for marriage. Yeah. Um, I also like that they have... Um, other scales for people who are cohabitating. They have some um, scales specifically for different cultures. They have scales for African Americans and mm -hmm. for Jewish couples, and it's it's pretty broad. I think um, hitting a lot of different um, uh, people and culture groups. So I think that that's good. Also, mm -hmm. for those who are coming into the relationship with children. Um, mm -hmm. They also have an assessment um, for that as well. Yeah. And one of the things I like about uh, Preparing Rich also is that you have the option of having a faith base mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. with your um, exercises yeah. or a secular. So um, I like that because I, I did the, uh, the training with Prepare and Rich as well. And that assessment, as Dr. Danita said, is very, 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 very in depth. They mm -hmm. ask the couples a lot of questions, yeah. and it's similar to Gottman in that regard, where they're what with the assessment, and with the assessment that's done, there they have what's called couple typology, mm -hmm. which means that a type of couple, and there are five couple types mm -hmm. uh, based on the assessments that's done. The first is the vitalized couple. And this couple tends to have the highest, what they call PCA or positive couple agreement. And that just refers to when both partners answer the question in a, po a positive or yeah. a healthy direction. Mm -hmm. So a couple that has a high PCA they're called vitalized couples. Then you have a harmonious couple type. Harmonious couples tend to have a high PCA scores in most areas except financial management and spiritual beliefs. Um, they have moderate relationship satisfaction. And according to Prepare and Rich, they have a low risk for divorce. Then you have the conventional couple type. Conventional couple type um, tend to have a lower PCA scores in the interpersonal areas like communication and conflict uh, resolution. Then you have the conflicted couple type. Conflicted couple type, they have the lowest scores, the lowest PCA scores of all. That's uh, also for premarital couples and couples who are dating who want to take this assessment as well. They have the lowest PCA across many or most of the categories. Um, they tend to have a low relationship satisfaction and high rate for divorce. And then there is the devitalized couples. And devitalized couples is only for married couples. That only pertains to mm -hmm. married couples. They have found um, devitalized couples have the lowest PCA scores across most of the categories. And it says these couples have the highest risk of divorce and tend to be unhappily married. So when you get, when, when the couple does the assessment and the uh, clinician, the counselor receives their report, it will include the couple type mm -hmm. for that particular couple based on their responses uh, to all of those questions. And sometimes there's a question of, are you going to share the couple type with the couple? Uh, I own, I, if the couple comes back as conflicted or um, devitalized, I don't share that <coughs> because they're already coming in, not feeling much hope. Right. And if they come back saying that they're devitalized, they, you know, they, uh, well, my advice will just get on out of here then. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important 
to always try to instill hope in the couple that no matter where they are in their relationship, no matter what's going on, there is still hope. Because listen, I say to them, you're sitting in front of me for a reason. So you are here. That mm -hmm. indicates to me that you want to make some changes, that you want something positive yeah. to happen in the relationship. So you're hopeful. I'm hopeful with you. So let's just agree to do the work. Yeah. Valerie, um, I, I mean, I know that they've done all of the research, but I wanted to go back to that harmonious. And it said that um, they <laughs> are not in agreement spiritually? Yeah, it says um, harmonious couples have the high scores in most areas except financial management and spiritual beliefs. I have a hard time fathom, I, I can't fathom how you can, you know, be harmonious and not have, I know. <laughs> not share spiritual beliefs. Yeah. So, I they've done the research, so I don't know. Well, they've done the research, <laughs> but at the same time, I think we as believers have a hard time fathoming that mm -hmm. because you know we're about that whole unequally yoked thing. That's big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I imagine you're right because this isn't just. Although prepare and enrich the the, they are Christians. Yeah. Um, I guess the sample of whoever they used for research are you know it, it's broad in terms it's of yeah. yeah yeah it may not have been just uh just believers yeah yeah so i want oh i'm sorry were you about to say something i was just gonna say i agree with dr janita that seems yeah. hard to imagine that you mm -hmm. would be harmonious and yeah. on different pages spiritually but yeah yeah mm -hmm. and i think uh possibly um it's because there are so many other areas. Let's say there are I think 12 or 13 areas. And if they are scoring high in their PCA on nine or 10 out of those areas, except those two, then see for us, it's big, but maybe yeah. for those couples, it may not be as big a deal, even though they are not necessarily in agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, in those areas. So that's what I'm thinking yeah. is, a, is a possibility. Yeah. Um, and thank you guys again for watching. Those of you who are there, um, if you want to <laughs> ask questions, put it in the chat. If you have a comment, you could put that in the chat <clears throat> as well. Maurice Reed says you can't. I'm not sure. He, he, he was talking that. about um, when we said about being harmonious and right. not so, having... Okay. The same spiritual. Okay. Background. And thank you for watching, Maurice. And anyone who's mm -hmm. watching, if you haven't already done so, subscribe on the YouTube channel, Marriage Beyond the Breach. So here's the next question about Prepare Enrich. How does Prepare Enrich therapy facilitate communication between partners, especially in areas where they fundamentally disagree? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, you know, going back to the use of the one, to the use of the assessment, um, the couples get this opportunity to, vis to visualize um, what's going on and where they um, don't align. And mm -hmm. so um, because they can see these scores and they have this report, it does yes. open the, it, it provides the opportunity for more open dialogue um, mm -hmm. about where the differences uh, lie and, you know, what these, what these disagreements are and where, what's the underlying, you know, um, issues mm -hmm. and, you know, how can we work through it? And mm -hmm. so um, use, utilizing that assessment is key. Um, mm -hmm. There are so, you know, able to have those tough conversations that they might not necessarily have if they didn't have this tool, you know, in front of them that is yeah. highlighting those areas. And then it also offers skill building, you know, after, um, after identifying what the challenges are, they do offer, um, you know, the skill building activities to <clears throat> in this area of assertive communication <clears throat> is aggressive or passive, you know, mm -hmm. communication, teaching how to act, do active listening. So the it, it comes with, you know, several um, opportunities for 
couples to build skills. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to give a shout out. Hey, Mo, Maurice Reed. He said he's Mo from the barbershop. If that's the Mo that I'm thinking about, I haven't seen him in several years because I was wearing a teeny. We I had my hair cut really short, like yours, Professor Jenner. <laughs> and I used to go to Mo to get my hair cut. So if that's the Mo, hey, Mo, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. <laughs> so I want to ask this question in cases where you may have one partner who was more committed to therapy and coming to counseling than the other. How do you specifically address that imbalance? Mm. Yeah. See, this is what happened when you have believers on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll jump in. Um, yeah, you're definitely going to have for the you know, for the most part, you know, uh, someone coming in is like, fix him or fix her. <laughs> it's her fault. Um, or someone who is, you know, wants to be a co-therapist. Mm -hmm. Like, let's work together, you and me, to fix him, <laughs> you know? And mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, the goal of counseling and um, couples counseling is to <clears throat> initially understand that they're coming together for a purpose, you know, like, I, I think, you know, Kim's the one who actually um, shared this line with me. And I say it to everyone now. It's like, you know, you're not my client. You're not my client. Your relationship is my client. Right. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not here for either one of you. I'm here for your relationship. And yes. you know, I add it to like, if at any point you feel unbalanced in any way, let me know. Because, right. you know, like, and I've been a second and third fourth therapist that you know some couples have been to and i gotta say probably 75 percent of it why they say that it didn't work is because they think the therapist said oh they you know they were always they're not they weren't on my side it was it was all about her it was all about mm -hmm. him and so um it's really important to kind of keep them yeah. united so they're working together for that ultimate purpose yeah mm -hmm. yeah and you know, i just want to add to that tracy you are so right, because that's something I say to my couples in the very first session, mm -hmm. that neither one of you is my client, your marriage or your relationship, that is my client. And I prepare them yeah. for yeah. each one having turns on the hot seat. Yeah, you know, I do too. Well, have your turn on the hot seat. And I say there, yeah. there will be sessions where it may feel like I'm picking on you. I'm focusing on you, but trust and believe your partner will have his or her turn as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if I find mm -hmm. myself focusing on one partner a lot, I'll check in with the other and say, mm -hmm. I just want to or um, need to sit here a little bit with him or her in this. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 100% of the time they'll say it's okay. I've never heard a partner say no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I checked in yeah. with them. Yeah. yeah. I, I think if a couple comes in for um, premarital counseling or relationship uh, counseling and one is more committed, that should be a red flag. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it, that is your opportunity. If you're already a couple, mm -hmm. then, you know, you're, you're going to work through um, mm -hmm. that one person not being as committed. But if you're not married yet mm -hmm. and and someone is not committing to the work of right. preparing and the work, the work of therapy and the work of preparing. I say that's your opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's right, cut and run. <laughs> that's your opportunity. <laughs> but for couples, yeah. um, I I will you know do a scaling question like on a scale of one to ten. How committed are you mm -hmm. to the relationship? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll ask them separately and then discuss the results. Um, mm -hmm. If one, the one who is not as committed, I would ask, you know, what would it take to increase your commitment level? You know, just trying mm -hmm. to get, you know, buy-in. Um, and, and then through dialogue, we typically can, you know, kind of see what the problem is and why mm -hmm. that one isn't as committed. It could be fear. It could be just... Some are checked out, you know, and just came 
we've had many couples say that I came so that you can tell her or him that we're not meant to be together. (laughs) (laughs) Or also also that you could fix him. Or fix it, yes. (laughs) I would also suggest individual therapy. um, Yes. Give, you know, that less committed partner an opportunity Mm -hmm. to kind of process through Mm -hmm. the things that they need experiencing. Yeah. yeah. So Devin, Devin wrote that couples counseling, he said it was hard for me. So Devin, if you don't mind, if you can maybe just a, a just a teeny bit elaborate what was hard about it uh, for you. And Dr. Nidhi, when you were asking, we were talking about uh, measuring on a scale of zero to 10 about committed here, Brother Mo wrote 12. So I think he's super duper. <laughs> All right. I didn't know what the 12 was about. Okay, now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's, he's a, on a scale of one to 10, he's a 12 committed to oh, well. a relationship. Right. So cheers to your wife. Oh. Your wife must be, um, I want her to jump on and say something. <laughs> Yes, but you know, Dr. Danita, something I do do with couples when I'm asking them that zero to 10 or one to 10 scale, I'll have them write it down. And here's the reason I don't want one to be influenced Mm -hmm. by what the other one says. Mm -hmm. So I'll say, write it down, then don't, you know, let your partner see, and then I'll have them reveal. Because sometimes if one couple says a low number, the other one's going to say the same thing or low enough. I don't want them to be in, one influenced by the other. Yeah. I'll just ask uh, them to do some to do that. Now, did you guys want to um, comment on yeah. something? I yeah, I actually wanted to comment on what on what you were just talking about and kind of, um, and I agree on having them like do it individual and then compare the the notes because mm-hmm. one of the exercises mm-hmm. that I do with couples just so they have more just to promote more grace and understanding and compassion for one another. Mm, It's an exercise that I call, that's called sight, sound, touch. And I just take 60 seconds and I have each partner for 60 seconds, write down everything that they see Mm. in the space that we're sitting in and just write it all down. And when we come back together, they are so surprised at how they view things so differently. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing negative to do with one or the other and how Mm -hmm. God brought you together to complement one another. How do you celebrate the differences and build on them? Versus looking them Mm -hmm. at something that caused distance. Yeah. Yeah. How to celebrate the differences without those differences are what, typically drew the couple together and yeah. then they become the biggest bone of contention once yeah. they are, you know, doing life together. And yeah. it's how to continue celebrating that, that brought you together. Yeah. Um, um, definitely, okay. um, I'm going to do a Dr. Blackism to, to actually, <laughs> one of the things that he always says is like, you know, you may, Marriage might not look like the way that you have dreamed of, but God knew exactly what you needed. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. That's like, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is definitely a Dr. Blackism, and he had a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Black was one of our professors at Cairn University, um, and he is he is one of those individuals that I would call he's kind of put on the genius side. When it comes to counseling, if you have an opportunity to sit and just pick his brain a little bit and hear all of the the wisdom that he has, we definitely we were blessed to be able to have him as one of our professors. Mm -hmm. So I asked Devin to elaborate when he wrote in earlier and he said he never got a chance to speak much, that they were focused mostly on their on his partner, then found out later that she has borderline personality disorder. Mm-hmm. And that speaks to what um, I think Professor Jeter or Dr. Rita just said about individual counseling as well yes. as couple counseling. Yes, I think mm-hmm. almost every couple that I counsel, either I see them individually or they see uh, someone else individually, because that's important um, to focus yeah. on your own stuff in addition to focusing on the marital stuff, because some stuff is your stuff and some stuff is the marriage stuff. But yeah. even 
your stuff, it impacts on the marriage. Mm. So being able to have an opportunity and a space to unpack some of that, I think is really good. So yeah. Dr. Nina, uh, Mo, Mo said his wife's on the phone talking to her, her mom. <laughs> yeah, I did see that. Um, yeah. I wanted to, this. I was going to highlight this um, tonight and um, mm -hmm. uh, Devin um, shared about his wife. Mm -hmm. um, there are times that we have what I call an EGR partner, a partner that's going to require extra grace, mm -hmm. extra grace wow. being right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so when our partners have some sort of mental health challenge, uh, mental illness, they're gonna require that extra grace from us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any research behind this, but I'm finding that many females that come to me in, you know, mar married females, um, who have had trauma often get mm -hmm. uh, diagnosed with borderline. And then mm -hmm. the men who come who have had trauma get diagnosed as narcissists. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they do mm -hmm. display some of those behaviors. But if we don't get to the root of mm -hmm. how they weren't born that way, you know, right, how right. what happened to um, to them to get to this place where these are mm -hmm. the traits that they are, you know, displaying, whether it be the woman who has borderline personality, who is diagnosed borderline, or the man who is displaying these narcissistic <clears throat> both require grace. Yes, absolutely. Now we are at the one hour mark, it's 8.03. I have a couple more questions. If you guys are okay, we can continue. <laughs> if not, we can stop and come back at a later time for uh, part two. So, if and and if if any of you need to go, um, just you know, just just tell me, because I do want to be respectful of your time. And I know Tracy, you are at church, so <laughs> I don't know if you have to leave and go home. They're shutting off all the lights, but I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna make it quick, and there might be one or two that I don't yeah. ask. Um, okay, Maurice was asking what type of trauma. I don't know if it really matters what type of trauma that they experience that results in the woman being diagnosed with borderline and a man with narcissism. But Dr. Nita, you can speak to that uh, real quick. It, it actually doesn't. It doesn't matter what what trauma um childhood a lot of traumas different types of traumas happen um yeah. you know in childhood and whether it's sexual abuse or ongoing um e emotional trauma at the hands of a parent um it, it mm -hmm. there's lots of different you know traumas yeah mm -hmm. even trauma from a past romantic relationship yeah mm -hmm. yeah and so um oh, i'm sorry Sorry, in EFT, we call it an attachment injury. So mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. there is that one situation, experience, trauma that almost paused everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you kind of go back to, and the only way to kind of, at least through EFT, you kind of go into not to heal exactly, but to first start with getting your partner to understand why it was so painful. Mm, yeah. yeah. And just yes. that alone makes you makes you know the relationship connect more because now they are actually as a he under, he understands me now she understands why this hurt so bad he under she understands why I'm bringing this up 25 years later you know mm -hmm. you're looking to just seek to understand yeah. the pain and then continue to work on it deeper yeah yeah. Yeah, and it sounds as if that will increase the other partner's um, level of empathy and being able yeah. to empathize and yeah. have that grace for yeah. the other, and I not did. see it as a, as an attack or more than being right. indifferent or something to that regard. But to, to understand, that's good, right. Tracy. Yeah, and the prayer though is that the partner has the capacity. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that too. Yeah, and I think one of the challenges too with it is that because of the lack of supportive response when they experience the trauma, they've been taught to not trust or talk or feel. Mm -hmm. right. And what does the partner want most to be let in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to be there for them. 
And it's hard for the person who's gone through that trauma mm -hmm. to be, to be yeah. vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So you want to create the safety for them to be able to show up in Absolutely. those vulnerable moments. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think that safety piece cannot be overestimated or yeah. over I should say. I think it, that safety can't be overemphasized. It is so important so important to so many aspects of a healthy relationship. Yeah. So, I think yeah. this is why couples counseling is important to Dr. Denita, what she says, like sometimes the one partner can't handle it. Mm -hmm. and, um, this is when the therapist, therapist comes along and you slice it thinner, yes. so you slice it thinner to the point where then you mm -hmm. get them to the point of being able to handle it. You know, yeah. it's right. not dead. Again, that's what, where the therapist comes in and can actually be such a guiding, you know, mm -hmm. tool to be able to get both partners to that point of being able to handle mm -hmm. or even to pause it until they mm -hmm. are kind of, you know, healthier so they can actually work on some of these other things. Yeah. yeah. So speaking about safety. What are some of the strategies that you use or suggest to rebuild trust in a relationship after a betrayal, uh, such as one that occurs with infidelity? We ending with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, just some of the things that we talk about, not necessarily in this order, but um, forgiveness is important. Mm -hmm. um, choosing to be honest and transparent, mm -hmm. definitely ending that affair. Uh, there's no, mm -hmm. there's no rebuilding trust. If you're trying to yeah. hop, skip and jump, you know, in and out, mm -hmm. um, ending it and truly ending it is really important. Yeah. 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 And there's definitely the need for time, right? Cause, mm -hmm. um, sometimes the person who is the offender they feel like they've had a, a moment of repentance mm -hmm. and they feel like um okay god has changed me i'm not going to do it again and they want the the spouse who's like getting hit with a ton of bricks to mm. give a quick and easy forgiveness and just right. to say, mm -hmm. let's move on. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot more, it takes a lot more work. Right. That spouse yeah. needs to understand the impact of that. Yeah. yeah. That's um, true. And unfortunately, offenders don't typically like to hear that because mm -hmm. they, they're looking for a quick fix. And that's something yeah. that I say to my couples in the first session too, that listen, counseling is not magic and I'm not a magician. Right. Okay. Right. There's gotta be some work done and not for mm -hmm. nothing. But I shouldn't be working harder than y'all. Y'all need working harder than me. <laughs> That's right. If you really want this, it's, it's, there's, there's no magic here. Um, there's work to be done. Yeah. But if you do the work, you can't get to the other side of whatever you have identified as the issue in your marriage. Yeah. Um, to kind of add to Kim, um, I kind of shock my clients, and I, and I always say when when it comes to infidelity, I, I would say, well, do you know when you'll be done? trying mm -hmm. to rebuild um, this trust. And I was like, when one of you guys take your last breath. And, um, <laughs> they're like, what? I'm never going to get over this. We're never going to. And it's the idea of, you know, when triggers happen, it, you could even be driving somewhere and you yep. know, something mm -hmm. reminds you of something or a food reminds you of that, that mm -hmm. something that five years ago, 10 years, 35 years ago, mm -hmm. all that pain comes back. You know, right. the spouse's response is, why are you talking about this? We're over it. This doesn't happen. Or, you know, that that doesn't help. You sh you sh you're right. shutting it down. But mm. what if you were to say, as, you know, the spouse were to say, I get that. I get why that mm -hmm. was. And that re reminded me of that, too. You know, right. let you know, can can you tell me more about that? Can you or, uh, you know, I want I want to just be here with you in it. Not not just mm -hmm. to kind of like stop. Why are you bring, you know, bringing this up 30 years later? course it's going to trigger you in some of these moments right yeah. so my, my couples who actually see it as a, an opportunity to create connection less of a you know annoyance or why are we bringing this up those are the couples that continue to flourish and, and especially something called something with infidelity as big as that 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. That's good. I think also um, when the hurt partner, the victim is, you know, at that stage of asking a lot of questions mm-hmm. and, um, and the other spouse says, oh, I don't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt you. I don't mm-hmm. want to answer that. I say they're already hurt. It's, it's just let it all, give it all now. Because if you hold something back and then they find out right. three years later. Yeah, it's right just, back. Yeah. That's right. I am a firm believer in that too. And I, there is, um, oh, it's because uh, they're on a YouTube, a fair recovery. And there, there was another uh, practitioner that I'd listen to sometimes regarding uh, couples counseling. And, and I happen to agree with this position to divulge everything up to the bedroom. You don't have to get into details about what you right. did and how and all this and that, but anything that up to that point, because there are some things that when you have a visual image of it, it yeah. messes with your head to the point and it kind of stays there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I believe in uh, full disclosure, but full disclosure up to that limit and beyond that, not necessarily divulging um, anything else. So I want to ask, um, oh, here's a question. Uh, Maurice asks, have you really forgiven if you keep bringing it up? How do you, how do you ladies answer that? That's a really important question. And I think it's important to keep in mind that often what the the betrayed partner is looking for is that reassurance mm-hmm. that you're still there for me, right? Mm-hmm. That that we have, mm-hmm. um, that you're here with me. You you recognize the impact of what happened, and I just I need to know. I need to hear from you that you love me, mm-hmm. you are with me, you are, and you are not going to give up on mm-hmm. what we have worked hard to rebuild. And so it's an opportunity to give that that comfort and to just strengthen yeah. the bond and increase yeah. the safety. And that that's the underlying feeling, but it gets presented with ang- through, with anger. Mm-hmm. And so it's very hard for um, it's very hard for the spouse to be able to see through the anger to get to that right. statement that you just shared. Right. Yeah. With Especially if it's like years and years later, it's, you know, to kind of keep in mind, it's not the infidelity they're bringing up, it's the pain they're bringing mm-hmm. up. Right. right. So, that part, that's good. And you're not looking at rehashing anything, you're looking at to, you know, take care of the pain, be there yeah. with yes. us and, and the pain. Part of it. And just as Professor yeah. Jetter said, they're looking, they want that reassurance. They mm-hmm. just want to hear it again and again and again. You still love me. You still want me. You're here for me. I can count on you. Yes, I can start counting on you again. I can begin to trust you again. That's mm-hmm. what they are looking for. They need to hear, they need to hear that from you. That mm-hmm. ongoing reassurance. It's not a one and done. Right. Uh, no, it yeah, has to be right. ongoing. Right, Tracy, what you were saying? Until your last breath. <laughs> Until your last breath. I do believe, though, that um, with forgiveness does come a, a point where you choose not to use the past to determine what that person is going to do in the future. So mm-hmm. if yeah. revisiting the past is for that, you know, like you did it last year, you're going to do it again, you know this year, then I don't think that that it aligns with forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I agree also. And I call that <clears throat> holding your partner hostage to their past mm-hmm. behaviors and mistakes. And nobody wants that. And right. what I'll say to the trade partner is how, imagine how it would feel if your partner held you hostage by some of the mistakes that you, you made in the past. Mm-hmm. And if they're a believer, mm-hmm. how about if God held against us? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of our yeah. errors, some of our mistakes, some of our bad decisions, some of our sins. How would we feel? So I look at it that way. Yes, if you have questions, you want to ask questions, but there is a way to ask the 
questions where it doesn't necessarily <clears throat> come across as or feel like an accusation. But this is just something that I just want to know at a time because I need to get that reassurance from you. But not holding them hostage. Uh, yeah, that's good, Dr. Danita. Yeah. Tracy, I just got a message. I told you earlier that my daughter is from Karen. She just uh, texted me and said that you were her marriage role play uh, in lab. Oh, okay. You, you were Dr. Black's wife. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you know, Kiara. Yeah, he uh, he tortured me. <laughs> wow. We're That's all connected cool. somehow. Yeah. Yeah. The so other, just, the last thing I wanted to say yeah. about, um, about forgiveness mm -hmm. or rebuilding trust. One of the things that I find, and it happens over and over again, is that, um, the, the one spouse that, you know, hurt the, uh, partner, um, is, repentant and I'll do anything. I'll change. Yeah. I'll, yeah. And that victim, the hurt spouse, the betrayed spouse is going to hold them to change every aspect of their life, whether it had anything to do with the betrayal or not. Their natural yeah. inclinations to, to, you know, their personality types, everything. You said you were going to. You said you were, if, if the partner is naturally forgetful, if they forget something, you said that you were going to change and now you're still forgetting. So right. I, I try mm -hmm. to help them, dis, you know, disconnect the um, parts that have nothing to do with the yeah, infidelity. Right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> so uh, in closing, I just want to ask this for couples who are considering couples therapy, but they might be feeling a little bit hesitant. They might be a little bit unsure. Um, what words of advice or encouragement do you have for them regarding maybe taking that first step towards therapy? What would you say to them? Yeah. One thing I would say is that it's an art and a science. Right. Like if you, it's every therapist is not the, the right fit mm -hmm. or going to be a good fit for your relationship. And that doesn't mean that it, that the <clears throat> doesn't work. It just means, mm -hmm. okay, we need to do, we need to try again. So give yourself mm -hmm. that opportunity. And, and we often tell clients at our practice, you know, let's meet several times doing it and then let's assess where we are. And if you think it's a good fit to do the work that you want, um, based on what you want to see coming out of this process. And mm -hmm. just kind of understanding, just like, really, like there are certain people you choose for friends and you, yeah. we, have, we make choices as well. So I think understanding yeah. that there are, um, you know, un doing your diligence, talking to friends who have good recommendations, yeah. mm -hmm. reading mm -hmm. the bios, would this be a good fit for my spouse yeah. and mm -hmm. it's important. And you you can interview a therapist. You can Google questions to ask um, to interview a therapist. Although I don't get many um, people that interview I have in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's another, you know, a good way to determine whether yeah. this is a good fit, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. The hesitant part. Um, one of the things that I always say is that, you know, first off, we spend so much money on so many things. Mm -hmm. Why don't you invest in yourself and invest in your, you know, yeah. the most important thing in your life. Um, the other thing that I was saying that, you know, they're hesitant to start this um, is, you know, you're not just healing the marriage. You're here actually setting you know, your, your children up for, to be able to see. Uh, you know, yes, that is good. Mm -hmm. There's a yeah. legacy in, you know, yeah. what you are doing to heal just your marriage. And what it's, I always say it's like, you're not here just for yourself. You're here for your children, mm -hmm. your children, children, because they see what's mm -hmm. going on. And imagine, yeah. <laughs> imagine if our parents did this, they had the opportunity. Yeah. Counseling was a right. thing. Mm -hmm. that, that imagine where, you know, even in our own lives, where we would be, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really good, Tracy. Yeah, I, I really, I really like that because mm -hmm. you say it's not 
not just about the couple themselves. It's also about their children and their grandchildren and the legacy that they leave. Because it's important for children to see parents loving on each other. Because, you know, it trickles down. Right. If mom and dad are okay. So that, I, that, that's why I think the marriage has to be primary. Your spouse has to be primary. Absolutely. People don't always like to see that. They want, oh, my children, my children. Yeah, but if the, if the parents are okay, if mom and dad are okay, and they're healthy and their relationship is healthy, that's going to naturally flow down to the children and right. they're going to be okay. But if that spouse, mm -hmm. if that marriage is in chaos and there's arguing and there's bickering and there's fighting, and the opposite of that, if there's a stalemate where they're mm -hmm. not, where there's constantly the silent treatment because children, right. that, and that can be just as damaging as the arguing mm -hmm. and the fighting. Because what they see there happening in their home, that's the, that's going to be the norm for them. But what we want to do is have a healthier norm for the children uh, to see and observe, and for the grandchildren to see uh, and observe. Right. Wow, mm -hmm. this has been absolutely amazing, amazing. I thank you so much, and those of you who are viewing either live or later, I thank you and I appreciate you. Um, and I would also appreciate if on our YouTube channel, Marriage Beyond the Breach, if you would go to the YouTube channel, Marriage Beyond the Breach, and if you would subscribe and like and share. And also, if you are in, you or someone you know, in need of counseling, individual counseling, or couples counseling, I highly recommend Jenner and, Jenner and Associates Counseling. I also recommend Mending Hearts Behavioral Health and Family Services. Mending Hearts is in New Jersey. And Professor Jetta, you all are in PA. That's correct. All right. That's so you got, mm -hmm. you got a couple of choices here. If you're in Jersey, you can go to Jersey. If you're in PA, you can come uh, to Jetta Counseling. So I want to okay. thank you all for watching. And I especially want to thank my wonderful guests tonight and those of you who are still on just uh, show them some appreciate appreciation give them a shout out and because we like i said we want to treat them good because we <laughs> like our guests to come back so you know that's how you do when a guest comes to your home you treat them real good when you want them to come back because if it's somebody you don't want to come back then you might not offer them any refreshments or stuff like that not <laughs> even a glass of water huh <laughs> we want to show our love and appreciation for dr danita for professor jenner and for miss tracy Varghese. thank you thank you thank you and please come back on next sunday we're going to be talking about, we're going to have an entire episode dedicated to attachment and attachment theory. You heard um, some of our guests tonight talk about attachment theory and the part that it plays in couples counseling, but it also plays a huge part in, in individual counseling. I don't know any particular treatment modality where knowing something about attachment and how uh, attachment may impact our lives in so many different ways. So, oh, Maurice, we're on Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern time. 7 p.m. Eastern time, okay? So my sister Jackie said, thank you, ladies. Great conversation and information. So tune in again next week. I'm, I'm starting to lose my voice because I had a whole busy weekend. All right. All right, Maurice. I hope to see you. <laughs> and, hey, Mo, this is why I just want to say this to Mo real quick. I'm trying to get my husband to come to your barbershop because he needs some help with his mustache. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to get him over there. Okay. So be on the lookout for us. So Delisa said, great talk. Thank you all. So God bless you, ladies. And you. everyone, you watching, you. ladies and gentlemen. And I will see you all next week. You guys can hang on for a second. I'm just going to end the live stream.